In 1997, Dave Bryan was pastoring a church and was focused on helping people in need when a lady in distress came to him. Dave took her into his home like he had done with many others before, except that this lady was not your typical homeless person. And it was only a week later that this happened. So I was piecing together this mess and I'd been up all night and now we had to leave for this um, this Bible camp or we were going to be late. And so we packed everybody in the van, was headed down the highway, and we were losing time because we hadn't been able to cast out this spirit. And every time this uh, spirit would manifest through her, we'd have to pull the van off the highway and rebuke the devil and, you know, fight with all that mess that goes along with demonic control. And so we were getting further and further behind it. And I was frustrated and, um, uh, I, I was frustrated that we were, were even, uh, had agreed to go to this camp. And, uh, I remember telling people we were just headed into Nevada and I told, uh, everybody, I said, listen, Nevada is notorious for not giving speed, speeding tickets. And we're going to pray for the mercies of God and test that out. I'm going to just see how fast this Chevy van will go because otherwise we'll be late as the keynote speaker, and they're already a little bit troubled by um, by our talks up to this point. So I'm just going to try to make it on time at least. And so I was going over 100 miles an hour. Everybody was exhausted. Uh, some of us had been up the whole night prior, and uh, I was exhausted. Uh, Ramona, as we called her at the time, was uh, seat belted in, and, and she was in almost uh, a completely exhausted, almost a catatonic state. I mean, she was just like uh, nearly unconscious. She was so exhausted from the fighting that had been going on. And so I, I saw this sign and it said, Winnemucca Indian Nation, 10 miles. And what I did, I just got the witness of the Holy Spirit that to put it into words, what was just like, Hold on to your butt, boy. This, this could be wild. And I, I just, it was a warning. And I thought, what, what's going on here? And then I thought, oh, Indians, we fought the wild woman in the woods and, uh, and we have been fighting the Piazza bird. And, and I wonder if something's going to go on when we enter into this Indian reservation because of territorial rights, you know, but we were just learning about all that stuff. And I hit that Indian reservation doing 110 miles an hour in a Chevy van. And when we crossed the line, all the doors, including the big sliding door, the two doors at the back, all the doors in the van opened simultaneously and everybody's seatbelt came off simultaneously. Now, again, if, if you've never been in that setting, I hope you never are because it's pretty wild. Stuff is going out down the highway. Uh, everything's blown around inside. People are waking up horrified trying to figure out what's going on but the main thing is that uh, an evil spirit uh, tried to toss a uh, ramona out onto the highway doing 110 miles an hour and by the grace of god i saw what was happening i reached over and grabbed her arm she she was still there she's a, a little tiny thing and at the time she was a, like a featherweight well how how did you reach out because you were driving the van, right? So you're driving the van, 100 miles an hour, all the doors open. How'd you reach out to get her? Right hand. Kept the left hand on the steering wheel, grabbed her. I grabbed her left hand with my right hand and was was trying to keep her feet from dragging on the the highway. And so it was. I was trying to pull her in and trying to stop the van, and, and it, it was truly bizarre. But in that, um, we... we uh, got slowed down and I, I had pulled her most of the way in. And so I was like this now and the van was almost stopped. And with her other hand, she reached under the seat where I carried a nine mm high power, uh, pistol loaded, uh, locked and loaded, ready to go. And she pulled that pistol out and I, I, I saw what she was doing and I just locked them up in terms of putting the brakes on, I reached down and traded hands, grabbed that other hand. And now I've got her hand with the pistol in it. I'm trying to get the pistol out of her hand and keep her from shooting anybody, which which I did, thank God. But anyway, I, I got the gun out of her hand 
And now this spirit is talking out of her. And uh, I'm uh, I'm somewhere between being completely exhausted, uh, totally frustrated, um, scared and angry. It was not a good emotion, you know. But um, but anyway, the spirit started cursing me, and I said, "Who who are you?" And the spirit said, "I am the power spirit of the Winnemucca Indian Nation." Well, the night before, I'd just done a little midnight study on the power spirit of the Eleni Indian Nation, and and so I said, "Okay, so what do you have against?" Ramona Jarnigan. And this spirit speaking through her said, oh, you're such a fool. That's not Ramona Jarnigan. You don't even know who you have here. Well, I I had thought all along, she's not being honest with us, this idea that she learned all this dabbling in witchcraft. I knew that was a whole boatload of baloney. And so now this, this spirit is mocking me, saying, you're so stupid. You don't even know who she is. And I said, okay, so I don't know who she is. But Whoever she is, she's with us. And he said, yeah, but she's also marked with the blood of a virgin sacrifice that gives me the right to kill her on my territory. I'm just like, oh, my gosh. It's just one thing after another. And I said, the blood of a virgin sacrifice? And the spirit said, yeah, he says, you you can't even see the mark. You're blind. And I said, okay, well, uh, since I can't see any marks, what mark? And this spirit said, you mortals are are, are uh, so lame. He says, there are marks that people carry because of their sins. They're marked as being the, the property of the dark Lord. And she bears the mark of a virgin sacrifice. And I can kill her if I choose to, and I chose to kill her. And and I know, you remember, Gabriel, that the promise of the Bible is that when we get into dire straits, so to speak, that the Spirit of God will help us know what to say. And that was mm-hmm. so evident to me in that setting because I did not know what to do. And I, I just uh, blurted out, I said, so you just tried to kill her. Well, yeah, and I have a right to. I said, okay, you may have a right to, but obviously you do not have the power to. And he said, I have the power to kill her. I said, really? Because what I just saw was an epic fail. I didn't even know you were waiting for us. And the van was going 110 miles an hour, and you did everything you could to kill her. And as you can see, she's very much alive. So I said, however powerful you think you are, Jesus Christ in us, without us even knowing about the attack, thwarted your best efforts to kill her. Well, those kind of things really make evil spirits angry because there's a huge amount of uh, good old fashioned pride there. That, that, that's the mother of all sins, you know. And, and so, oh, he was angry. You're, you don't know anything. You, you're blind in the spirit world. I'm powerful. I said, okay. So, so, uh, just, uh, bear with me here as a guy that you say doesn't know anything. Uh, are you the most powerful spirit in this Indian nation? Yes, I am. I said, okay. So all you spirits see in the spirit world, that's your world. Of course we do. I said, okay. So however many spirits are here in the Winnebago Indian nation, they all just saw you get your little pointed butt kicked up around your horns. And I'll kill you. I said, you just tried. You you just tried to kill me. It was an epic fail. I can kill you. Right, right, right. I said, okay, here's the deal. I'm late for an appointment. You say you can kill me. I say you just gave it your best shot and failed. But if you know anything about us, you know we're not going to roll over and give up. You know that. And so as I see it, there are only two options here. Either you can let us go down the road and not be completely humiliated by every demon in the Winnemucca Indian nation. Uh, or we can stay right here by the side of the road, fast and pray and miss my appointment, which I never wanted to go to anyway. 
and we will fight you until we completely humiliate you in front of the, all the, the forces of darkness that are on this nation. And so it was just quiet, you know, when, when things go quiet, spirits are thinking, right? And he says, kind of in a stone, she says, if I let you go, will you promise not to come back ever? And I said, I won't promise to not come back, but I'll promise not to bring her back. I can make you that promise. He said, okay, so if you bring her back, I have the right to kill her. And I said, okay. And he said, so, so that's the deal. I let you go. You don't bring her back on this reservation. And if you deal, do, I have the right to kill her. Now, today I wouldn't have made that deal. I'd have just said, no, throw down, pal. We'll get it on right here. But, but I was late for an appointment. I was exhausted. And I'm just telling you, that's what I did. Right or wrong, that's what I did. Yeah. We also didn't have a whole lot of experience with that. I, I didn't have an experience. And I just thought, okay, man, I'm ready for. An easy out. I don't have to come back down this highway. There are a lot of highways back to Northern California. And so that's what happened. And, uh, and, and that spirit left. She came back to her senses and she knew, I mean, there was stuff all over and, uh, we had to collect our stuff from the side of the highway. And she knew that I was, uh, you know, I, I didn't have my happy face on. And she said, are you angry? I said, yes, I'm angry. And she said, at me. And I said, well, yeah, that too. She said, what happened? I said, I will tell you all about it, but not until we get off of this Indian reservation. So she didn't know what had happened. She, she had just like blacked out. She didn't understand what just happened. Blacked out, lost time, did not know what had happened. And so I, I just put the pedal to the metal, got off the Indian reservation. But as soon as we got off the Winnemuc Nation, I pulled over to the side of the highway. And uh, I said, Ramona, you need to get out of the van. She started crying. She said, are you going to leave me here? I said, I haven't decided yet. And, you know, so she was begging for mercy. And Cheryl was, oh, be, be nice, Dave. You know, Cheryl's the, like major uh, compassion, which I, I love. But I, uh, I had been patient to the point it almost cost me the lives of my entire family. And so we got off to the side of the road. And I said, here's the deal. And this is non-negotiable. If you are honest with me right now and every day after this, we will go to hell and back for you. But if I find out that you are lying to us about important information, like who you are, all bets are off. Because, and it's not a bad attitude on my part. If I know anything about the Bible, it's the truth sets you free. If you don't tell the truth, you're not going to get freedom, in which case all of our efforts will be wasted on you. And I'm not, I'm not willing to waste my efforts or the lives of my family or myself so that you can lie your way through life. I'm not willing to do that. I, I told her, I said, the power spirit of the Winnemucca Indian nation manifest through you and mocked me and told me several things. A, that I didn't know who you are. I've suspected that all along. I need to know who you are. And B, that you were defiled by the blood of a virgin sacrifice. And he had a right to kill you. And she just broke down. She fell on her knees, put her face in her hands, and started sobbing. And started saying, it was my little sister, Delina Starr. And I said, okay. So what we're not going to ever entertain again is you telling us, oh, that happened because I was dabbling in witchcraft. And I said, so I need to know how you know all these things, how you know power spirits on a first name basis, uh, how you got defiled by the blood of virgin sacrifice, who your, your true identity is. And, and I don't expect you, you, you can go through all kinds of things, but do not lie to us going forward. And she, I remember she's kneeling there just crying and she said, if I tell you the truth, will you promise before God that you won't kick me out of your family? And, you know, I thought that's, that's fair. And so I said, okay, I promise before God, if you tell us the truth, we will not kick you out of our family. And I, I kind of thought, Gabriel, how, how bad can I get? We, we almost were all just killed. We survived. 
So apparently God is looking out for us. So, you know, how much worse right. can I get? Right. So I said, we, we, we promise we, we will not kick you out of our family, but we need you to be completely honest about everything. So she said, okay, Ramona Jarnigan is an assumed name. I said, okay, what was your birth name? She said, Ray, Ray LeVay. And I said, LeVay? She said, yeah. I said, are you related to Anton LeVay? She said, that was my father. 